All right, so we are back from the break and we have Roman here, who's going to talk to us about monitoring our Kubernetes deployments. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. And uh, that's the first time I'm on this conference and really pleased to uh, give a talk. So my topic is um, Kubernetes monitoring and why it is uh, so difficult to monitor it. And who am I? Um, I'm basically an engineer and also a co-founder of uh, Victoria Metrics Time Series Database. Every day of work is engineering for me. So uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I've seen uh, the problems with Kubernetes from the real life experience. And what is Victoria Metrics? That's an uh, open source time series database. And uh, uh, this is where I see these problems with Kubernetes monitoring, basically. So um, this is a screenshot from one of the researches uh, done by Chronosphere IO uh, from 2022. And according to this research, like 70% of companies are concerned with the growth of uh, their telemetry data. And when business says it is concerned, that basically means it is too expensive. Like it, it, it basically means that expenses are higher than they expected, or they just can't scale, uh, scale up at the required pace. And scaling of telemetry data is um, not usually correlated with the value which that data brings. So uh, when you are concerned with the growth of the telemetry data, probably you don't have enough value from it, or you don't see increase in, uh, of the value when this telemetry data is increased. And this is also a good screenshot from the same uh, research, and it shows how uh, how businesses increased in scale with time, and how the same was to the telemetry data they collect. And you see that at some point, uh, telemetry data started to scale much faster than business value scale, like two, three times more. And another important thing is that on x-axis, you see that those businesses were slowly moving to the cloud native approach. So basically, they were moving to a microservice architecture. They were moving to running Kubernetes. And uh, another report made by CNCF uh, from 2020, and that's basically a question, what are the main challenges from running a microservice architecture? And 40% of uh, respondents are concerned with complexity uh, they face every day uh, when they move to cloud-native approach. So why uh, Kubernetes monitoring is so challenging? How we end up here? Kubernetes is like uh, almost nine year old or almost 10 years old. And probably uh, a lot of people started to uh, learn and use it like three, four, five years ago. And um, it is likely Kubernetes was already complex by that time. And you just accepted it as a fact why uh, it is so complex and why so many metrics are exposed by Kubernetes. So let's try to understand uh, why collecting telemetry is so complicated in Kubernetes. Well, first of all, Kubernetes is quite complex. It contains a lot of components. And if you go to, uh, by that link, you will see that each component of the Kubernetes uh, exposes some specific set of metrics. And to understand uh, how Kubernetes works and how to track the state of Kubernetes, you need to learn what are the, those components and what are those metrics. And another problem is that the amount of these metrics also grows with the time. Like, it is increasing every year. If you're comparing uh, the amount of metric names, unique metric names, no, not time series, just metric names, comparing to uh, 2018 and 2022, it increased like almost four times. And at some degree, you could say that uh, if we consider that um, you need that many metrics to describe this process. Then at some degree you can say that the complexity of this process is represented by the amount of metrics you need to use to describe it. So at some point uh, I can say that complexity of the Kubernetes also increased comparing to 2018. And the same uh, is for the most popular exporter everyone runs on uh, each Kubernetes node. Uh, for node exporter, if you see, uh, the amount of metrics comparing to 2016 also increased like four times. Uh, that means that, uh, from my perspective, node exporter became four times more complex. 
you can argue that it's become more detailed. But if you take a person who started to using Node Expert in 2016 and the person who started using it right now, they will need to spend different amount of time uh, to understand what are metrics exposed by Node Expert. So basically, that's also a complexity. And here are some uh, simple formulas to calculate the amount of metrics exposed by, uh, um, uh, by every Kubernetes node. So at minimal, if you set up uh, just a, a basic Kubernetes cluster and you install the basic things on each node, the minimal uh, amount of metrics you can expect uh, this time at this time series from each Kubernetes node is like 2,500 or something like that. And that's just a minimal. Realistic uh, number of values will be like 4,000 or even more. That all depends on the amount of hardware you have, amount of uh, and containers you run. So yeah, and um, 4,000 is still not a lot. But if you have like 10 nodes, it will be already 40,000. So you have a multiplicator here. And multiplicators are a very dangerous thing. So uh, what, what are these metrics? Well, back then, uh, before Kubernetes, uh, running an application was quite simple. You have a hardware server, just an instance, and you have your application. And you run that application on the instance server. Now you have uh, the same instance. Uh, you have installed virtual machine. On that virtual machine, you have a pod. Inside the pod, you have application, which consists of one or more containers. And all these metrics in Kubernetes need to describe you uh, what's happening inside of these layers. So if something happens, you could understand from these metrics what, what exactly happened. And this becomes worse when you start to scale uh, because you have multiple hardware servers, multiple uh, pods or applications can be deployed on the same uh, hardware server, and again and again you, you get increase of complexity. And this is how it looks in practice. So if we deploy a very simple application, Nginx server, uh, with three replicas. And we start to collect metrics from the C advisor, not even from Nginx itself. Only C advisor will give you like 600 more new time series to describe how, how this deployment runs. So um, another very important uh, problem is time series churn, which also um, <laughs> very interesting <laughs> part of the Kubernetes. So before you had a time series. Time series is a consecutive ordered by time list of observations. And when you ran an uh, application on the old-fashioned way, on the on just a physical server, you had this, uh, for example, HTTP request metrics. And it was labeled with the instance IP address or name or whatever. and uh, it doesn't matter if you restart the instance or you restart your application, you will still have the same time series. In the Kubernetes, you have a pod name. And pod name is a label which is attached to each time series exposed by this application. And every time you redeploy, uh, uh, you redeploy your application, just restart or change a, a version, you have a new pod name, which means that uh, one specific metric will be re replaced by another metric with a new pod name. And this is uh, quite complex for monitoring solutions to keep up with this churn rate because, um, because Kubernetes uh, teaches you to, to not afraid of uh, frequent redeploys. Uh, it's like the, the philosophy is that you need to deliver as fast as possible and it is totally okay to, uh, to, to make new deployments like three, four times a day. And if you see this formula, it also has a, uh, some multiplicators. Um, it basically, you have container stat metrics plus application metrics, and then it is multiplied by amount of deployments and replicas that you have. The more replicas you have, the higher will be impact of each redeploy. And um, yeah, by the way, uh, how do you think is, what do you think is the average lifetime of a time series nowadays in Kubernetes? Like how long? Hours, days, weeks, months? How long could it take for time series to be alive? Yeah, uh, you're right. So uh, from my 
personal, uh, I mean, work experience, uh, we observed some metrics from a big cluster, which was collecting metrics from Kubernetes, and it had like 80 millions of active time series. Active time series is a time series which exists right now, like, or was ingested in the last 30, 60 minutes. So that, that's your current metrics. The current number of time series is 80 millions. But if you calculate the amount of active time, seri of time series collected for the last 24 hours, it was more than a billion. So, in fact, it says that all the set of metrics, all 8 millions, are changing like uh, more than 10 times per day, right? So, uh, that's quite a concerning thing. That the uh, average lifetime of a metric is about two hours. And comparing to uh, old-fashioned way, uh, time series just existed as, as long as, as they could. And this is what, uh, for all time series databases, are optimized. They are optimized for, uh, for long-lasting time series, and they are all vulnerable to time series churn. I mean, Prometheus, Thanos, Cortex, uh, Mimir, Victoria Metrics, all they are vulnerable to time series churn. Okay, so we have a lot of these metrics, and we have a churn rate. Do, do we need all these metrics, actually, that Kubernetes exposes? Uh, there is no easy answer uh, for that question, because uh, some people could say, no, we don't need them. We, we need only those metrics that we actually use. Uh, metrics which we run in our alerts, metrics that we plot on our dashboards, or uh, build in our reports. Let's keep only those. But uh, there are some people which are concerned about the, uh, some specific event which could happen at an uh, unpredictable moment of time, which is called usually an incident. And when that incident happens, you want to understand what happened. And when incident happens, it, it is likely anticipated event, uh, not anticipated event, sorry. Uh, so you start to dig into all the metrics that you have in order to find the correlation to find an answer why this incident happened. And probably you will need all those metrics exposed by Kubernetes, or at least you want to uh, scroll through them to understand maybe something will help you to, to get the answer. Okay, how we can uh, determine which exact metrics we need? Uh, well, there is a tool uh, from Grafana Labs called Mimir tool, and what it does, it actually scans the list of your alerting rules, recording rules, and Grafana dashboards. And from that, it forms an a low list, a low list of metric names, which is then used in relabeling. And uh, each metric which doesn't fall into this a low list will be dropped. And according to Grafana Labs, uh, if you apply this Mimir tool to the regular uh, Prometheus Cube stack installation, you will keep like 8,000 out of 40,000 of metrics. So basically, uh, you, can, uh, you, will, you will save only uh, every fifth metric. And the rest of them aren't used. Uh, if you take a look at Cube Prometheus stack, which is usually used by default, um, it exposes like about 1,200 metrics. Uh, metric names, and only 300 of them are actually used in the dashboards and alerting rules. So there is 76 unused metrics which you don't use every day, and you collect them just in case, and you store them just in case, and you pay for them every day. Okay, how we can, uh, what we can do with this? Like, how we can reduce this amount of uh, unused metrics? Uh, maybe there is some monitoring standard which could help us to unify all this. Well, there are some standards. For example, uh, this is a use uh, st monitoring standard, which stands for utilization, saturation, and errors metrics. Usually, people use the standards for monitoring hardware, uh, but it is not applicable for applications usually. Uh, so there is another method called RED, uh, it, and it is uh, <laughs> applicable for applications, and it stands for rate, errors, and duration metrics. And also there is an alternative from the Google uh, engineers, and it is called for golden signals, and it is like uh, more a mix of RED and use. 
uh, which also helps you to uh, helps you to think about how your metrics needs to be formed. But still, uh, all these standards doesn't help because they are not binding. Like they do not force you to do something. They are just recommendations. And uh, since they are just recommendations, many companies can use them or not, or, or they can have their own standards or their own libraries for instrumenting applications with, with metrics. So you end up with a huge amount of metrics in each solution. And another painful thing is that this uh, amount of metrics changing over time. Uh, that was metrics which were useful like a year ago, today might not exist, or maybe renamed, or just uh, not used anywhere. And yeah, you can find many articles in the internet uh, arguing which, uh, what to do with this, but still no strict, uh, not defined answer what to do with this. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the results of uh, how fast everything is moving. Uh, on grafana.com you have a list of community dashboards and people usually use it. And uh, why? Because you see the amount of downloads that, that's usually is, uh, hundreds of thousands of millions. And those dashboards are not updating for three, four years. So basically, if you install them now, it is likely they will be not showing you the full picture or won't be working at all. Of course, you can say in, in Kubernetes you can have a, a mix ins which generate your dashboards uh, uh, from the upstream, uh, but still there is like, like no coupling between dashboards alerts and metrics. There is no like a binding power. You can create a metric, but no one obliges you to use it, and this is the point when uh, everything can go out of sync. So, uh, what are the challenges? Uh, which were brought by microservice architecture. Well, now instead of one single application, we have uh, a bunch of microservices, and also those microservices are installed, are, are having like multiple instances, and each instance have their own metrics. And as far as you go to bring your single application to microservices, the more metrics you will have, right? Uh, now, you, when you have this many microservices, users need to, uh, to understand the full picture of what's going on. Users need to track and correlate events across all those microservices and instances, which is also a complex task for our monitoring solutions. Ephemerality, or the thing when you have these pods restarted all the time, only brings uh, more complexity into the thing because you have all these labels all, uh, all the time changing, and now you need to somehow ignore those pod labels or account for those changes and try to, to locate what happened to, to your application. To overcome these uh, new problems, uh, some new solutions were used and introduced uh, in the modern monitoring, uh, this uh, distributed traces, and in Grafana stack you have exemplars, which bring more context to the events, uh, to the events in distributed systems. So basically trace and uh, trace or exemplar could give you more uh, more information without contributing to the metrics cardinality. And all this is only to overcome these challenges from the microservice architecture. Also, when you have a lot of microservices, some another very complex thing comes into the play. It's networking. Because if you have many microservices, they communicate with each other. And then you have a network which connects those microservices. And network is also a very complex thing. So now you need to account for the problems with network uh, in your application. And that also needs to be monitored, monitored and explained. And also, another thing is collocation. So Kubernetes allows you to deploy multiple pods on the same instance, and it does it very well. But uh, sometimes it creates a problem of noisy neighbor. I don't know if you've seen that, but I've seen it a couple of times when uh, one application starts to behave, one pod out of 100 start to behave oddly. And this is only because it was deployed to the same instance where another application was saturating uh, compute resources. And there is like no uh, good way to understand what's happening until this port is redeployed to uh, another instance and everything becomes okay again. Okay, what else Kubernetes bring into the uh, complexity of the modern application deployment? 
Well, uh, Kubernetes itself needs to be monitored, and we already said that it exposes a lot of metrics, and you need to collect them, you need to store them, uh, process them, and understand them. So this is cognitive load, and this is uh, uh, the place where you need to pay money for storing those metrics. If you think about that, uh, like I just Googled uh, yesterday, like how many uh, Kubernetes clusters are, are out there in the world, and it is likely uh, three millions of clusters uh, running everywhere. And if you add, I don't know, 10 more metrics to the Kubernetes stack, uh, it will be immediately multiplied by three millions, and that's already a huge uh, number. So you need, you need to be very careful when you introduce any changes to the uh, Kubernetes metrics, because once you add it, uh, all people and engineers over the world will need to collect those metrics, store it, process it, and understand. So that's a huge impact. What else? Uh, yeah, um, active time series churn, which is, uh, I already said that it's quite a complex problem for all monitoring solutions, but we'll talk uh, in, more detail, in, in more details later. Um, yeah, so all these challenges from microservice architecture and Kubernetes architecture, um, what we do with, uh, in, in the monitoring area, what we do with them, we spend a lot of time to overcome these challenges. We spend a lot of time to remain efficient and to deal with the with these problems to give users more uh, like better tools in order to understand what's happened with these complex distributed systems, what happens with network, with compute, with all the microservices. So a lot of time is spent only on that. And maybe if there was like no Kubernetes at all, if we if we run that on, in old-fashioned way or in some other way, we won't have the we, we won't need these um, distributed traces. We won't need exemplars because the complexity will be lower, and you will need won't need to explain it with new tools. And maybe if there was no Kubernetes, uh, all this time which we spend in the monitoring area can be used uh, for doing something more interesting than just dealing with a big amount of data. Maybe like, uh, I, I don't know, automated root cause analysis or anomaly detection or automated metrics correlation. correlation. But no, if you take a look right now at the Thanos Cortex Mimir uh, promos, they are all bragging about like, we are dealing with tons of metrics. So all what uh, competitors in the monitoring section do, they are, they are just bragging about how much data they can process and how efficient they are at, at this. Okay, um, uh, this is a good quote from a uh, quote from um, Brian Brazil, who is core contributor, was core contributor of Prometheus, and this quote from 2018. And Brian is answering the question like, how many metrics a application should expose. So Brian says that a very complex application with a lot of moving parts, uh, he expects it to expose like about 1,000 times series. And in the same time, Prometheus is, I'm seeing, I think, is very complex thing. And Prometheus at the time was exposing like 700 of time series. And this is quote from 2018. So if you, Google, if you try to count number of metrics right now, it is like 1,600 metrics exposed by, time series exposed by Prometheus. So almost two times, uh, more than two times since 2018. So you could say that complexity of Prometheus increased with time. And it's uh, not only about Prometheus, Victoria Metrics is also doing that, so entropy only grows. Amount of metrics we expose now is three times bigger than we exposed when Victoria Metrics was released. And we use only 30% of them uh, in our dashboards and uh, alerting rules. So you see the entropy always grows and uh, all solutions become more and more complex. So we need to strive to reduce this complexity some point. What you can do with that? Well, in Kubernetes, you can disable some metrics or build an allow list and to expose a, a little bit less metrics, only expose those what, which you use. What does Prometheus? Well, Prometheus basically changed the storage layer just to deal uh, with these challenges introduced by Kubernetes. If you check uh, this quote from the article when Prometheus 2 was released, it basically says that uh, Prometheus needs to adapt to new challenges introduced by Kubernetes and Mesos. So that's, that's, that's the basically the reason why Prometheus 2.0 exists, only because of Kubernetes. 
but still, uh, even after that, uh, high cardinality issue and churn rate didn't disappear. They are still there, but Prometheus is just more efficient at this, so there are a lot of issues about Prometheus resource usage. Uh, what Victoria Metrics does with that? Victoria Metrics also tries to be uh, like more efficient uh, with the resources to do the same work. Uh, it also uses like short-term uh, indexes to improve performance for storing these high, uh, high cardinality metrics with high churn rate. And it also supports streaming aggregation, uh, which um, helps you to pre-aggregate data before they got ingested into the database so you don't spend those extra resources like you do with recording rules in Prometheus. So you can do some calculation before they got into the database. How we can improve uh, the situation? Well, we need to think first how to reduce this complexity in the first place. Uh, we need to always think carefully about the amount of metrics exposed by Kubernetes or by your application, because adding metrics is easy, removing metrics is what uh, really challenging. Uh, we also need to take care of uh, amount of uh, label value pairs exposed by application. Usually uh, histo histograms contribute a lot uh, into that, so we need to be careful when we uh, choose label value pairs. Uh, also, what can be, uh, can be done, um, horizontal pod autoscaling or frequent deployments that uh, result into high churn rate, we can probably also think how we can reduce that. For example, keep uh, pod names stable, uh, which, will, which will improve situation drastically. And probably we should have a better coupling between metrics and their usage. So if you define a metric, make sure that it is used at least somewhere. You know, in, in, in the Go, Go code, for example, if you define a variable and you don't use it, uh, your program will not compile. So maybe we should do that as well. And yeah, I ask uh, everyone to think about this uh, when you have a few minutes. Maybe you come up with a better ideas. Also, some of this um, uh, topic was discussed with uh, Doton on, on this, um, and that's the, uh, the article with the same ideas, and there is an interview with CTO of Victoria Metrics regarding the same problem, so feel free to check it. Yeah, that's all. Questions? Do we have any questions? Um, you talked about removing metrics as a, as a good thing, and in general I agree with you. I guess there is always a, a kind of cultural uh, blocker to it that I've seen, which is you have an incident maybe many years ago and a metric proved useful, and it's forever more being included, on maybe on a dashboard. No one really looks at it. Mm -hmm. But the idea of removing it from people is, is a very scary one, right? So even though we might know that actually we, you know, we've got so many metrics now that no one can see that as useful, people still cling to that metric because there was that incident back when, when they used it. Is that something you've seen? Do you have any ideas you know, when we talk about removing metrics, how do we overcome that? Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that metrics need to be removed. I I'm saying that you need to think carefully before you add a new metric. So basically, maybe if one metric proved itself worthy, maybe when you need to describe a new process uh, inside your application, maybe you can contribute this value to this existing metric. Maybe you can repurpose it. Or uh, take, uh, take a look at the SLI purpose, why people have SLIs and SLO, because it's uh, far more easy to hide the complexity of application when you express it via uh, one or two of metrics which are basically uh, saying everything is good or everything is not. So this is like a good way to keep the uh, cardinality under control. You have like a limited list of metrics describing your process and you need to think carefully when you add another one because it's, it's, it's very easy to add 1,000 of new metrics and developers usually do that because because, okay, Prometheus can handle it or another solution can handle it, that's okay. But this is like a snowball. Uh, the volume increases with time, as you've seen, and at some point, uh, existing solutions just can't keep up with that. Thank you. And I would add to that that uh, many of the uh, these methods have to look at. You give the example 
Maybe I would add to that that you gave the good example that someone actually used that and incorporated it in, in dashboard. But what he showed, and I can testify, I see the same or roughly the same numbers as well, is that 75% or even more of the metrics aren't used in dashboards, aren't used in alerts and rules and anything. So these are the no-brainer ones to at least consider removing. So what you described it, it at some point in the past, it was used and it was left in a dashboard or a rule, that's, that's okay, but that's still only 25% of the uh, of the metrics that that's the amazing the, the mind blowing part of the uh, stats that three fourths of the the metrics aren't being put to use in any rule any dashboard any alert any uh, anything thank you do we have any other questions uh, are you familiar, this is, thank you for, for the talk, it's interesting, and I'm curious because this is a challenge for the entire community. And the question is, as far as you know, is there a concerted effort to uh, open it up for a community-wide discussion on standardizing on the, I know that different vendors try to tackle it locally, you showed it also on the, on the talk, but is there a concerted effort to bring them all together on the one, around one table to, to uh, formalize some best practices or recommendations or guidelines to, to streamline this? Yeah, I, I'm not aware of it. I, I'm not aware of such global. Um, initiatives to do that and that's one of the reasons why I'm giving this talk just to um, pay more attention to this problem because actually for uh, for us for Victoria metrics as a time series database which is a selling point is that it is high performance uh, we actually benefit from the huge amount of metrics and if uh, Prometheus can't keep up with that people start using Victoria metrics so for, for us it's like a good thing but as an engineer, I am uh, pretty concerned with, with this increase in metric volume. And I, I'm seeing like every day how uh, people just store everything they have and they don't use it and they just add more and more and more hardware until something breaks, right? right? And, and this, is, this is a wrong path, I think. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you all.